Hey guys, in this tutorial I am trying to write a test for basically uh, marking hard dependencies. So in the last tutorial we wrote a test for account class and we marked the getInfo method and we expect that getInfo get call with a specific request ID. But now in this tutorial I'm trying to actually test the hard dependencies so what is the hard dependencies as you can see in this code we are creating a new instance of a user and pass the whole arguments to this user a class so this will call it hard dependency this is this is not something that has been uh, injected into the constructor or the method it's just in in the method we are basically blind to it we don't know really how uh, it is there. We can't really mark it. There is no, there is no injection way. There is nothing, no ways to basically get rich to it. So PHP unit is uh, it's 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 giving us a way to basically mark these kind of uh, uh, classes which uh, has been created in the code or in the method. So as you remember. I have wrote the scenarios and we have wrote the first scenarios. So now I would like to write the second scenario. The second scenario is, which is to marking the basically the user class which we have used as a hard dependency into the store method. So I will write my test by I was I will start my test by uh, creating a new uh, test public function test we use our convention store should create a new instance of user with specific arguments okay so in this case what we what we should we do i mean the first thing we need to do is to basically mark the account because we don't want to hit the account and as you know uh, as you know, uh, we actually we actually uh, calling the get info from the account. So we need to mark this so we will not call the third party API. So we can actually duplicate this uh, part of the code, or we can use the setup and define all of this in the setup. So we will not duplicate the code. So I will use the setup for this. Setup. and into the setup I will try to move the whole code here and okay we need request ID so this should be general and we need a okay there is request ID should be as properties and we need the account so the account also could be private account and pass the account okay and this account we are refactoring the code actually and the request id is request id all right that's cool wonderful and okay now we should actually uh, run the test and see if it works fine. Okay, everything works fine. We will return back the test and we try to write the test for testing the critical new instance of the user. So I will uh, start my test by creating a new a user controller and then creating a new request and then uh, pass or call the store method. But in the meanwhile, I would like to know if I'm receiving this information like this name, last name, phone number, and request ID in the uh, actually constructor of the user model. So how we can uh, mark uh, our dependencies? So you need to do this. Like mark re, mark 
and then user class but before defining this user class in the mic method we need to use something called overload so what is overload overload works as an interceptor so it will traverse to your method um, and it will see that you have used it as a hard dependencies and then it basically grab that um, class that you are creating an instance of it and it just uh, mark that for you so let's say we have a mark marked user and then we will say mark user should receive construct because we are passing the, uh, the, the arguments to the constructor so we should receive construct so it means we should call it I mean the, the user the model user should call the construct with the arguments okay which arguments these arguments so name last name phone number and we don't need the request ID okay let me see yes the X so we need name last name phone number we don't need request ID but what do we need we need something else and it is the national ID and the birth date so the national ID is this and the birth date is also this so I pass this to national ID and birth date we don't need no okay so my user should receive co construct with uh, this actually arguments so now if we run this what should will happen let's see filter um, okay our uh, document match no okay let's see what's the problem the problem actually name last name okay name last name uh, national ID so the national ID should be uh, as the third parameter so name last name national ID birth date and phone number now it should work actually that uh, the order of the arguments uh, was wrong so we fixed the order and now as you can see we have three assertion so actually if we uh, somehow comment this let's see how many assertions we have we have one assertion but now if we uncomment in uncomment this then we will have two more assertions this two more assertion is for the construct and uh, actually the overload but i don't know how why we do we have two assertions but um i mean anyway I mean we have assertion we have success assertion because we have assert this uh, class user model and we have defined that it should receive a construct with this argument so now for example if a developer comes I mean I don't know somehow he changed this name to something else but I don't know name then I mean for sure it failed yeah and if for example uh, I don't know he did change something from user info to some static numbers then of course it should fail but uh, when you get back I mean w when you revert the code then it should success so uh, there are one problem in this code and the problem is that when you use overload or alias I will explain the alias what is the alias uh, and how we can use it then you should use um, a duck block here and this duck block is the is a way that basically we should separate this test from running with the other test and because we have used the overload method why we should do that and why we do need it well we need it because this is how php unit works there is no other way so you need to preserve the google state this is the first um, thing that you need to add here and there is something else which i don't know really what is this 
I would like to run the whole test and see what is the failure that we will face. So yeah, cannot load my class already exists. If we search this, for example, yeah, we can see. So there's a Docker block that we need to use. And when you, when you use this, then the problem will actually uh, vanish. But there is one problem that when we use this, run your separate process and preserve global state, then your, your test will get slow. So this is the reason that we should not create an new instance of a class into a method. We should always use dependency injection or method injection to um, pass the class instance, I mean the object in instance to the object or the class instance to the place that we want. So now it is the time to uh, actually implement or create a new test, which is uh, implementing the third scenario, which we have wrote here. So test is the store method returns the expected result. So, so far we have wrote down two tests, and this is the last or the third test that we need to write down. So test um, store should return the expected expected results so now what should we do we should basically create a new request and uh, create a new instance of the user controller create a new request and we don't need to mark the user model because we need to know what it basically returns for us and we are expecting a response from it response so now we have a response i would like to assert two things so first of all i want to assert equals expected is 200 and the response is get status code this is the first thing the second thing is the assert json assert string assert json string equals json string so I should write the expected JSON here. The expected JSON is like name. Yeah, it is. It is actually it is this object here. So we can uh, uh, request. Okay, let me see. Request array. Well, array request. but we don't need to send the request ID. So we put it into array. Uh, okay, we have a request array plus, uh, why we don't need to pass the request ID be in, in here? I mean, why we don't need the request ID? Because the request ID is not part of the response that we are receiving. So we don't need to put it into the request array. We have the request array as a name, last name, and phone number. We need two, two more things which we have used in um, here, which is a national ID and uh, birth date. So these two are the arrays that we need. We need to compare them to the response, get content, and okay let's see what it's containing um, let me run this test first okay it contains name last name national id birth date and phone number it is totally fine but we need to json encode this Okay, and now if we, okay, cool. So yeah, as you can see, we are expecting, uh, 
we are expecting uh, the content of this response to be equal to the request that we have sent and it is the same and equal to the request that we have sent so now if I for example change this to something else it should throw an error and it is throwing an error so okay this is the third scenario which we are testing if we are returning the expected result which we are returning the expected result and this is the second scenario which I have already explained for you and this is the first scenario which I have actually uh, wrote uh, I mean I mean I have uh, uh, made a tutorial for it <clears throat> in the previous in the previous one so I hope you enjoy this uh, tutorial and I will see you in the next one